welcome to lecture 34. Uh, in this lecture, we will discuss various aspects of urban land management. Uh, in last few lectures, we have been discussing about the built environment, built development of a city, housing and other aspects. Uh, without a proper land management, it is not possible to shape a city. So, we will learn uh, the land management in little more details. Even though in some earlier lectures, we had a discussion uh, on land as a basic resource, where we found uh, or we have discussed the various aspects, various characteristics of the land and any other matter. Today, we will basically discuss that how land management is done, what are the stages of the land management and basically we will uh, learn the overview of land information system, land demand management and supply management. So, let us start with the uh, land information system. Uh, before that, I ask, uh, I just start the discussion that why we need a land management. You have seen in your cities that uh, most of the cities in India uh, basically uh, they are unorganized and when you see that cities are full of uh, very uh, low storied congested areas having no accessibility or very little accessibility and practically making difficulty for the common people for making accessibility and navigability uh, along the streets. So, this does not uh, mean that the city is a compact city or a high density city. Basically, the city has grown organically as and when people came and they purchased the land, they constructed their house and they have and later they found that the road and the other basic infrastructure is not there. So, if we could plan it, if we could prepare the land before people come, before people purchase the land and make and provide the adequate infrastructure, then we can revert uh, this process. So, let us see that what is the existing or the common practice that how land is converted from agricultural land or from other land to some habitation land. Let us see. So, here in this diagram, you can see that in the first picture, a a common citizen who comes and who who needs a house who thinks about that how I can build a house. So, he purchases a land from the market. So, next not market then he construct a house a house and after that now here either he, he can make through proper permission or approval or non approval. And after that the municipal authority they are they are asked to provide provided by municipality. Now, in this uh, diagram, please follow that there is very less scope of, uh, of providing services uh, along with the land or before the construction. And at the as a result, many a times you have found that the urban roads are very narrow like this, very narrow like this and it is surrounded by the the plots or the building in such a way that you cannot make out or you cannot make a proper road network or you can provide any basic infrastructure. So, this is simply uh, because the people and land uh, people comes first and they make the land and, pro and construct the house. Now, instead of that we can revert the process let us see that how we can revert the process in a proper planned and managed land scenario. Now, in this scenario, we assemble land. Basically, we assemble the land before uh, considering the requirement or the demand of the people. So, the assembling land in a large scale, large scale, then we provide services and infrastructure. So, provide or develop services and then we sell those plots or sell those uh, houses to the people 
and then they occupy the house or the plot. Now, in this scenario you can see that land and services comes first, first and people comes at the last. So, this is the ideal situation where a land has to be assembled, developed, infrastructures provided and then given to people for their habitation, so that they get all the adequate infrastructure. And in this case, the cost of the infrastructure is much lesser, because the amount of acquisition, amount of the uh, conflicts are very less in comparison with the earlier situation, where you have to uh, discuss with so many people and because everything is built up, you have to make a kind of a surgery uh, in an urban situation. So, this is these two situation I am showing. So, in short basic difference is like this. So, in the scenario one, the people comes first as I have told and services comes at the later. And the second situation, the planned land and services comes first and people come at the last. So, this is unintended development, this is intended development we, which we try and because of this we can ensure the services and the basic infrastructure. Now, let us see that. So, if this is the objective of the land management, what are the salient features or elements of the land management? So, first component of a land management is the land information system, the way how we manage all kind of information of land in our uh, uh, department. So, any land information system has four basic uh, pillars. The first is the efficient land registration. Now, you know that in your state or in your cities, uh, basically when you purchase a land or you convert the land um, use or land occupation, you register the land or the property under some land registration department. So, this is uh, essential under the uh, under the law and land is a state subject because of that every state government has their state departments to do this job. Now, this land registration often take lot of time like few, few months. Now, can we make a system, make a uh, mechanism, so that this system of land registration becomes very fast like say within one week if the papers are ready. So, question is land registration could be faster, efficient, efficient, transparent, you know that during the land registration there are cases of uh, cases of bribes and all those uh, issues so transparency is another important uh, mechanism and then and then user friendly so if we can maintain the faster method efficient method transparent method and user friendly, the land registration could be very much easier. In some of the countries, in some of the cities, they have started land registration through one window system. That means, you do not have to, you do not have to run through departments to department from one window, one particular office, you can manage the land registration process. After that, uh, the next part is to keep the records in the government department properly. So, the record does not become uh, wasted or spoiled. Now, earlier classically the land records uh, in the government departments are, uh, are kept manually. What they do? They make the actual physical maps uh, which is drawn in papers or paper like uh, material and they keep in their um, archives. Now, over the period of time these paper documents are uh, definitely no longer uh, working and this create the loss of data or the distortion of the data and error in manual work or manual keeping of the paper works is also difficult. So, can we uh, can we keep the record after a after after a error free ground checking uh, of the uh, land record. So, next part of the uh, land information system is the ground reality check using sophisticated technologies like geographic information system and global positioning system. Now, within this system our objective is to minimize error maximize
ground truthing that means the land data should be matching with the ground and it should be also transparent because you are using technology people will accept that yes it is more dependable and also it is conversant with planning method. So, if you use GIS and GPS in land record management, this data directly can be used as a basic data or base map for the preparation of the future land use map or future plan, future master plan of the city. So, that is what is required. The second is the records management. This record management using the G GIS and uh, GPS should be done in a systematic manner. robust systems. You can use uh, IT based systems to keep the record in a centralized and decentralized method robust systems and it, it should be integrated with GIS and GPS. And not only that for records management you need the sufficient training and exposure because from manual to the uh, different system to new system innovative system you need to uh, develop or you need to enhance the capability of your people. The next part is to ensure the tenure security using transparent and efficient land distribution. For example, if you want to purchase a land in your city and if you want to have a uh, assessment of the land availability in the city, you would have to depend on the brokers or the middlemen. There is no system uh, uh, except few better studies, better practices uh, where you can get all the data in a centralized platform that what are the land in, uh, available and whether those lands are verified or authenticated by the land departments or not. So, since the land department has the all has all the data and the information, they can bring all the uh, uh, data in one platform and can share in a centralized platform. So, through this they can distribute the land to the people when and uh, when it is required more uh, democratically and more transparently. Another example could be that if you want to hire a, uh, a rented house or if you want to purchase a apartment. Now, there are private uh, uh, websites or private uh, property management websites where you will get some information, but none of the informations are available on a geographical uh, database where you can see the map of the city and you can click and you can understand the available property, available rented property, etcetera. So, it is possible if all these informations are taken together and integrated in a common platform. That is that can be done uh, if uh, uh, urban uh, in, uh, development department or the land department they takes initiative and that is backed up with, with um, the robust technology and robust uh, backup of the better systems as we have discussed. So, so, starting from the registration, land registration, ground truthing, uh, truthing, record management and the land dissemination or land distribution. If we can integrate this process in a better manner, in a systematic manner, this becomes a land information system better. After that, let us see that the next stage. So, land information system basically enables you to keep and disseminate land. Now, how we bring much amount or large amount of land under the public disposal, so that for the large infrastructure this land can be utilized. So, that is called land supply management. So, we have basically four methods by which you can uh, uh, we can make the land supply in cities in our desired quantity. First is the land acquisition, second is the land use and development control, third is the land assembly and fourth is the partnership models. 
Now let me explain one by one very briefly. Land acquisition I discussed earlier that earlier we used to land acquisition act 1894 and now we use land acquisition rehabilitation and and resettlement act 2013 and since this is a current act this act is used for all kind of land acquisition for all public purpose and this act also eliminated up to some extent uh, the cases of the litigations cases of the public uh, unrest all this because it has the provision of the uh, social impact assessment and uh, taking consent of 70 to 80 percent land owners for taking all the land. So, this land acquisition act is there we will share the copy you can study the act. So, at present I am not going into much details about the land acquisition two three things I would like to mention that land acquisition process is a time consuming process and unless it is a completely public purpose you cannot go for land acquisition. So, if you are sure that it is a public purpose and you are going for land acquisition and you have sufficient time to plan and to assemble the land then only you go for land acquisition. Yes, urban local bodies and development authorities they can acquire the land as per their requirement. The second method by which we control land uh, so that you can use some land that is land use and development control. So, we earlier we told that we can make so ok. So, these are two methods uh, under acquisition expropriation and large scale acquisition both are basically compulsory acquisition using land and under the land use and development control we use one is LUDCP which we discussed earlier also land use and development control plan. Now, in LUDCB or master plan we can basically play with the land use density and the control to, to make a variable, uh, uh, variable amount of land use or variable extent of the land use and its compactness and we can, we can use the land value in a better way. So, that some land uh, can be given much importance can be available for the public purpose. So, this LUDCP or any master plans these are done usually by the town and country planning department under town and country planning act. So, LUDCP ensures making a land use uh, register uh, for every city or every planning area and then make a uh, future land use map. So, future land use map or future land use control plan ensures that which are the land is dedicated for public purpose which are the land which is dedicated for the public purpose. But the disadvantage of the LUDCP is that there could be legitimate um, uh, legitimate discussions or the discourses that why sub, such and such land is given for public purpose such and such land is uh, shown as a private purpose. So, LUDCP preparation or uh, land use map preparation is always therefore, a participatory method and to eliminate the, this uh, kind of uh, process or the conflicts of the unrest, we always prefer land assembly using innovative innovative method like land readjustment, land uh, plot reconstitution. So, let us see that what are those methods. Now, in plot reconstitution, in plot reconstitution, uh, land pooling <coughs> readjustment, what we do basically uh, if, uh, we do not acquire the land or we do not only make the land uh, control land use control like LUDCP. Here we take the land temporarily from the landowners, we develop the services and we upgrade its quality and then give back some amount of the land. For example, if we pull 100 units of land from the landowners and th which are raw land or agricultural land and we provide the basic services like road, water supply, sewerage, drainage, etcetera, electricity, electricity and we return back some amount of land. Why some amount of land may be 50 percent or 60 percent because other amount other land is utilized for the infrastructure and some profit some profit or uh, commercially viable um, uh, land uses. So, that you can build your infrastructure. Now, since the, the cost of the land the earlier land is much lesser and the cost of the price of the developed land is much higher that is why it is much more acceptable to the landowners and because of this method this this is highly acceptable 
method and India it is called town planning scheme. Schemes mostly it is popular in Ahmedabad and Maharashtra all those states. So, apart from the assembly or the but now uh, currently various state governments they are working on the plot reconstitution or land uh, town planning scheme and government of India recently they have come up with uh, uh, sub schemes or they are going to uh, bring these sub schemes on the uh, new urban extensions using the plot reconstitution or the town planning scheme in a great way. So, therefore, uh, if you uh, understand the basic concept of the, uh, the town planning scheme or the plot reconstitution it will be added benefit for you and it will be required in coming in, in near future. The fourth is the partnership model here uh, neither you are uh, acquiring land neither you are making a robust uh, development control neither you are land uh, pooling the land, but here you are making the development either jointly or by uh, some private developer. So, there are two methods it can be guided or it can be joint land development here you are giving authority authority to the private player to acquire develop and dispose the land. So, in this method uh, here uh, the efficiency or the expertise of the private developer is used in this method. So, these four methods are there where we use the land supply management. Now, let us see that this we have discussed. Now, some examples how uh, the land uh, pooling is done. You can see that this is some uh, random pictures I have collected from the website. So, the earlier this the picture in the left side this is showing this earlier condition where land is not managed and this is the reconstituted land. So, you can see that existing streets these are ex existing street these are given uh, importance to make the new road and the another uh, set of plots new plots are uh, created which is much more regular in nature and much more uh, ha all the plots are having the accessibility. This is the another picture you can see the, uh, the how the uh, land the plot reconstitution uh, or readjustment is done. These are some pictures from the uh, Gujarat. Uh, so, here you can see that uh, this is the existing or the earlier scenario this is the proposed scenario. There are a lot of examples you will find on the, um, uh, the published literature or in the websites you can see him for greater details. Now, if you see this picture a little uh, greater details you will find that they have tried to, um, to, to integrate the existing roads. So, one of the major challenges in the land pooling is that how to integrate the existing feature like existing roads, water, uh, water bodies, open space etcetera. Et Whereas, the land readjustment scheme or town planning scheme has much more advantage than the land acquisition because it is a participatory method and here there is a win-win situation government and the landowners they share the more or less equal uh, benefit sharing and but the issue is that uh, the proper distribution of the facilities like accessibility of the road in terms of width of the road, their nearness to the uh, park or playground, the water bodies and all this existing feature. So, that is uh, basically uh, demands that demands a very critical and the robust spatial planning or technical planning which is required, but otherwise this process is a tested process and which is uh, which takes uh, in sometimes longer time, but for uh, in comparison to the land acquisition it takes much lesser time. This is another example you can see that how efficiently bring, uh, uh, the condition of the land from earlier to present is maintained and here you can see that in terms of road, green space, then public semi public in terms of health and education is also given and some commercial 
or business area is also provided to create the employment and also all the plots are given accessibility. And in giving the accessibility you can find also that bigger plots are giving the are getting the access of of wider roads that should be the approach whereas smaller road smaller plot should be given uh, narrower road so there should be uh, this kind of distribution where you can create large amount of public amenities water sub, uh, water bodies open space uh, road and other um, uh, job generating activity for example commercial areas and the public semi public areas and also there will be the even distribution of the road and accessibility in terms of their width and the open space the location of the open space now let's see another example this is the uh, another example uh, you can see uh, so they have tried um, in a better way how it is it can be organized now if we compare the situation uh, so we have four model one is land acquisition then land use land use and development control plan and then land pooling and then guided land development now now out of this four method the compulsory acquisition of the land is done only by the land acquisition method remaining four methods are not use compulsory land acquisition in guided land development there could be land acquisition <coughs> in some cases then in terms of participatory method you can see that land pooling is the best method which gives the participatory method whereas uh, this is not and in terms of the time consume consuming land acquisition is a long term activity land use is a medium it depends land pooling the short term or medium whereas guided land development can give you very efficient and short term result because it is done by the private developer uh, or private entities and then <coughs> transparency and the satisfaction faction uh, it depends where the land pooling has the most uh, most successful or the acceptable case because all the plan is done from the beginning with it and in a, in a participatory method where land acquisition um, or ludcp it depends on the situation so these are the parameters by which you can uh, you can uh, compare the situation. So, apart from the time transparency and then also you can see the fact of manpower that what kind of manpower you need for that. For land acquisition yes you need dedicated manpower with expertise in LUDCP also you need that need and land pooling definitely it is needed in guided land devel development you need only for control here you are making only control mechanism remaining acquisition and development is done by the private entity. So, if you compare this four method you will find that that 
no one method will give the maximum or all the advantages. So, therefore, based on the situation you can use uh, all types of development uh, uh, land assembly management. Like if you have some large infrastructure project which a uh, public entity has to do for example, water supply or uh, solid waste management all those you have to acquire the land or if you want to develop a residential estates or commercial estates you can go for uh, land readjustment and down planning scheme or if you do not want to do all this because you want to you do not have much time or much manpower capacity definitely land use and development control plan will be uh, another line of action, but definitely the outcome in, term, in terms of infrastructure and the planned outcome which we get in the um, land readjustment and the town planning scheme will not be similar in the la um, land use and development control plan because it is basically ultimately it is a indirect control. And fourth that is the guided land development where, where you need uh, immediate results and immediate projects that can be done by guided land development. The whole uh, New Delhi airport extension has been done using this method. So, we will share some of the documents you can go through and you can understand and select appropriate method for your own context. Now, after this discussion let us have a discussion on the land demand management. So, we started from the land information system and its uh, various uh, um, elements. Next we discuss the land supply management and after you have the land and it is recorded properly, it is kept properly, it is uh, verified properly, but how to manage the demand, how to distribute the, uh, the land in a better way. So, let us see some of the points that how we can manage the demand in a better way. The first is the demand estimation. Now, in this last in, in some of the lectures we when we talked about the planning. So, demand estimation is always done by the future projection of population and based on that if you an apply the analogy of the density you will get the uh, the land requirement in terms of residential, commercial, green, uh, industrial and so on. So, demand estimation has to be done based on your current land value and based on the projected uh, estimation of the future population. The second is the, the concept of the density and compact development. A thumb rule is that more the density, more the number of population will be accommodated in a particular area, but there is a uh, threshold beyond which if you increase the density you, it cannot take the, uh, the, 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 the pressure on the infrastructure. For example, in, uh, in your city if you take the any residential area and the population uh, and if you divide the population by the area you will get the uh, population uh, in a unit area. So, that is your gross density, but can you increase suppose it is coming 200 or 300 population per hectare. Uh, so, can you increase further 800 or 900? The answer is no, because if you redensify or if you allow more FAR or more uh, incentive for densification, maximum it can go another uh, 100 like 300, 400 persons per hectare. But if you can plan it properly for the new areas, new extension, green areas and as we discussed for the land supply management and you allow dedicated uh, FAR uh, in such a way so that the design density is becoming 600, 700, 800, 900 or 1000, you can achieve much more uh, population density. If you have seen the large uh, satellite townships or the uh, growth centers around Delhi, Mumbai or Calcutta, you will for example, say Noida, Greater Noida, Dwarka, Faridabad, you will find that those areas are having large or high storied uh, uh, buildings. Now, and also there are wider roads. Now, the thing is it does not mean that it is a low story develop uh, low density development. Actually, those areas are uh, compact and very high density development in comparison to the existing uh, very uh, flat kind of development where you will you will never get a adequate road uh, width. The reason being that here it is a planned development, we have uh, kept the adequate space for infrastructure like road, water supply, everything beforehand and remaining land you have allowed very high density uh, development for example, 800, 900 etcetera. So, that is possible. So, if you analyze and apply the concept of dens density and compact development beforehand it is possible. 
there is another concept which is being discussed in the planning or the national uh, scenario, international scenario, the transit oriented development. In short, it is TOD. Now, transit oriented development basically ensures compact high density development around the transit corridor. In most of the Indian cities now, they are facing uh, or they are developing the, uh, the metro rail or the MRTS corridors. Along these corridors or the bus corridors, you can develop high density uh, development. So, that becomes uh, another approach to develop density, high dense density areas. Next is the, the land disposal policy. If you have land, you got some land, how you dispose the land, what type of uh, uh, use you particularly allocate. Like in land use map, you have allocated the residential, commercial, etcetera. But within residential land, are you going to allocate the land only for the developer? Are you going to allocate the land only for the individual private, uh, um, uh, private landowners or you are going to allocate the land for uh, cooperatives or some companies so that they can build their uh, employees housing or you are going to allocate the land for the slum rehabilitation project. So, it depends on the the scenario of your city, the existing situation, the demand and the variable demand for each and every category of the residential requirement. Similarly, for the commercial area, if you are going to dispose the land, which category you will give the priority? Are you going to give the priority for the business sector or you are going to give the priority for the retail sector or manufacturing sector or the wholesale sector? So, based on your uh, variable priority, you can make the land disposal mechanism. For an example, I have been, uh, I have shown in some of the uh, slides some pictures of the Newtown Kolkata and some other parts. Uh, um, some of the projects now, nowadays they uh, people uh, propagate or they give priority to the cooperative development because cooperative de development they can achieve high density, they can achieve uh, better housing, but not through developer. And also you can provide some amount of uh, land through the developer because developer they can achieve really high density development within stipulated time. So, but there are other aspects like whether the, uh, the authenticity or the uh, credential of the developers are uh, good or not. So, those we will discuss in separate lectures, but the thing is the land disposal based on various categories is very important factor. Then development controls, after you allotted the land and dispose the land, how you are going to uh, uh, control the development. Few parameters you should not forget. For example, in the development controls, you should not, you should mention the FAR is very important uh, element which basically determines the density. Then ground coverage, setback, building height and essential amenities. We have told you earlier that in net land use, uh, when people develop their plot level land uses. So, at the plot level, there could be requirement of some mine, uh, some uh, local level land, uh, other land uses. For example, a developer is developing a large township of say 50 acres or 100 acres. So, within that 50 acres and 100 acres, if they are going to um, accommodate few lakhs of people, then they will definitely need the, the school, the educational facility, commercial facility. Now, it is that developer's duty to develop all those public amenities and facilities. So, when you make the development control, do you have that control that a developer takes a residential plot and he, he has to uh, develop mandatorily those public amenities or facilities, that kind of facility should be there. So, apart from FAR, ground coverage, setback, infrastructure, everything, they have to, you have to mandate this uh, kind of um, element in your development controls. Next is that, then controlling the speculation, since the land is a very scarcely commodity and it is a costly commodity and it is limited commodity as we have told earlier also, there is a uh, speculated market of the land and there are land uh, reselling cases, reselling of the apartments and the houses. There are various examples that we have seen in our uh, in world in various cities that, uh, that 
multi street apartments are built, but very few number of people are occupying that. Those cities are called ghost cities because people have made their second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth apartments and they are not living. They have occupied or they have uh, purchased it for their the investment. So, those kind of situation is not uh, desired. In terms of India, even though this situation is not much more um, uh, evident, but this uh, in near future it can come unless we control the speculation in a better way. So, if the objective of the controlling speculation is that, that land should be distributed or the land property should be distributed evenly in a transparent way and it should be controlled in such a way so that reselling or the rep or purchasing of a uh, second hand or third hand land or property becomes easier and so that uh, people common citizens can purchase that within their affordable limit. So, that is possible if government takes a, a strong action or strong uh, part in, in land transaction and also in the housing market. Government should not uh, uh, should not leave the housing market totally to the development along with the uh, assembly of the land government should build some amount of housing always and will some amount of amount of residential plots always in a affordable rate so that the speculated market and the real estate market is controlled at the same time. So, we have seen that in India few of the cities they have done this kind of practice and as a result the housing market is stable on those cities. So, that should be done for all the cities. Then there is a concept of land banking. After you do everything, do you have enough land reserve for your future development of your in infrastructure? Suppose in future your population will increase and you need another uh, decentralized um, uh, treatment plant of uh, CRS treatment. Uh, so, do you have that uh, land? Because in future when you will going to acquire the land, the land prices will be very high. So, it is possible that if you acquire the land right now and you reserve some amount of land for the future uh, activity, future infrastructure, it is, it is better for your governance. For example, in the case of Delhi Development Authority, they have uh, acquired uh, some amount of land for the future development and as a method, as, as a advantage, as a benefit of that, they could develop so many um, um, townships, so many infrastructures in and around Delhi. So, it is uh, it is it is also a part of proactive planning by which you can foresee your v, uh, future and you can assemble the land keep some amount of land as a bank for your future use so some of the cities they have already done so if you have the bank uh, land banking uh, it is good you can integrate with your planning and the gis based land record management and if you don't have please think about it and start right now so, with this we conclude today's discussion, uh, uh, the next le lecture will be urban risk and disaster management in the cities. Uh, before, uh, so quickly I uh, summarize today's lecture, today we discuss three aspects uh, by and large. First aspect is the land information system by which we can use better technology and systems to uh, ensure a effective land registration, we can ensure a ground truthing and errorless land record management and also we can ensure the dissemination of the land uh, to the people. Second we discussed the land assembly management, basically four methods we discussed in a comparative, uh, um, uh, comparative scenario. One is the land acquisition, second is the using uh, land use control tool, third is the land pooling mechanism or land readjustment mechanism fourth is the guided land development and then uh, we also discussed that land assembly is not sufficient we need to know how to manage the demand in the demand management salient features like uh, land disposal making compact city development future estimation and uh, land speculation management all these are very essential part of your land management and uh, land management i ended ended the discussion with the land banking so in your future please ensure that slowly gradually you make a situation or you create a situation where some amount of land is reserved for the future public purpose future public infrastructures with these words i uh, conclude today's lecture uh, thank you very much.